In today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive into the price action of AUUD. This was the biggest percentage gainer in the market today. It went up over 250%, but it might surprise you to hear that I didn't find it to be easy to trade. Just because something makes a big move isn't a guarantee that I'll find it to be easy to trade or that I'll make money on it. Now, as it turns out, I did make money on AUUD and we'll break down my entries and exits, but I'll also show you where I got faked out and some of the areas where I kind of screwed up my trades and really left a lot of money on the table. So let's go ahead and jump into the screen share. Now, by the way, this week, I wanna host a live class where I can do Q and A, answer questions that you guys may have, and where I can also share with you a bunch of new resources that I've been building out that I would love for you to download that I think you guys can use in your own trading. So what I want you to do is I want you to cast your vote for the day and the time that works the best for you for the live class so we can accommodate the most people. And then we'll email you the date and the time that we choose. All right, so make sure you do that. There's gonna be a link pinned to the top of the comments and linked in the description where you can go cast your vote. Okay, so now let's jump into it. Okay, so AUUD was um, first discovered on my, uh, it was actually on my top gainers scanner as it started to move higher. So what this scanner is doing is it's searching the entire market and it's sorting all of the stocks above 50 cents by the biggest percentage gain. So naturally, AUUD is the largest percentage gainer at the moment. Uh, however, I noticed it as it was sort of creeping up this scan right here when it was up 26%, then 28%, 29%, 30%, 40%. As it started moving up, I saw a green arrow. Now, right in this box, we have a green arrow when a stock is moving up the scanner or a red arrow when a stock is moving down the scanner. So as I saw the scan results shifting, red arrows as this was jumping over others and green arrows as AUUD was moving higher, I knew it was something I had to take a look at. However, immediately I was sort of uninterested and the reason was because of the price. So AU, well, I'll show you the chart in a second. So as it was coming up, um, I saw that it did have news at 8 a.m. Breaking news comes out and the news headline was, um, developer proprietary AI platform, right? For audio and innovative technologies for podcasts, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they have a podcast, uh, sorry, they, they have a patent, a US patent. Now, to be honest, <laughs> patents are not usually a particularly meaningful catalyst. In fact, almost always, when we see when I see patent approvals, I sort of disregard it. I'm like, no, oh, that's not really a catalyst. But you know what's funny is earlier today, someone was asking, how much weight do I put into the catalyst? Because, you know, I don't know, is it seems like US patent trademark office catalyst is kind of weak. And there sometimes are catalysts that are very weak, and yet the stock goes crazy. And other times there are catalysts that seem really, really strong, and the stock kind of rolls over. The problem is, let's say you have a catalyst for, um, you know, a biotech pharmaceutical company. They've been doing clinical trage, clinical stage trials, and they have results that shows like 95% um, survival rate of a certain for a type of cancer that they've been treating. So it's like, wow, this seems really, really good. And then the stock opens higher, initially has news, it squeezes up, and then it just sells off all day long, all day long, all day long. Why would that happen? And then maybe the next day we find out that the company took this as an opportunity to sell more shares onto the market and to raise more money. So the specifics of that company were that although they had great news, they needed to raise money. A lot of these small cap companies, especially the ones that are doing um, sort of uh, research and development for different drugs, they're operating, they don't produce any profit. They're only kept in business by investors who are funding by buying more shares their ability to keep developing these drugs in the hopes that they get one that's a big win and if they do then the company becomes a buyout target by one of the big pharmaceutical companies and it saves those big pharmaceutical companies from doing all of all of the research and development themselves now of course they do r d as well but when another company comes out with a treatment for a cancer boom they'll buy it up They'll bring that drug into their pipeline and, you know, the, and then all the shareholders get rewarded. So anyways, in the case of a stock that has great news, it's possible that the price will go down because of the dynamics of that particular company needing to raise money. 
And it's also possible that you'll have a stock that doesn't really have very substantial news, but the price goes up. And it could be because of the use of certain keywords like AI. AI is very popular right now. So that's, you know, that's one uh, possibility on this. And maybe just the combination of the price, the float, and the fact that there wasn't anything else that looked really good this morning, traders jumped on this one. So whatever the, the ultimate reason is that this went up 205%, given the fact that the news headlines seemed a little, I don't know, not super, super substantial, I, I couldn't really say. But nonetheless, m the way I kind of proceed in my workflow is that, number one, I find the stock moving, step one. Step two, I identify the catalyst. Step three, I look for an entry. And when I pulled up the daily chart on AUUD, I noticed that um, the 200 moving average is around $8 a share. So I thought, okay, $8 a share, that's fine. It's not too close. Um, yes, we're below it, but we have room to come up to the 200 moving average before we hit that level of resistance. Now, from a technical perspective, there were a couple other things that I noticed as well. Just looking at the stock on the scanner, uh, of course, at this time, it's when I got the screenshot, it was up 227%. But even when it was up only, um, you know, 20, 30%, um, the float was the same. So the float was less than a million shares. So I'm like, wow, that's a really low, low float. And the relative volume started high and has continued moving higher. I set my minimum threshold of relative volume at five. So this is just over the minimum threshold. This is just below it. And then the rest of these are, are well above it. So with a minimum threshold of five for relative volume, this is over a thousand, the relative volume checks the box. For those of you that are new, perhaps tuning in for the first time, the criteria that I use for evaluating whether a stock is worth trading is I try to understand whether or not I think it's going to have a large imbalance between supply and demand. So supply is just the number of shares available to trade. That's the float. So that's a very fairly easy number to figure out. What's the supply? That now the demand is caused initially by the catalyst, but there's other things that fuel demand. When you have a stock, for instance, that um, is in a hot sector, that can create demand. When you have a stock that's of a certain price range, that creates more demand. When you have a stock that has a really nice daily chart, that can create more demand. And then the demand is measured in the amount of volume today relative to what's normal for that stock. And what I want to see is that that ratio is that the volume today is at least five times higher than what's normal. And but higher is better. There's no such thing as too high. So then I check the catalyst. Then I look at the chart. I see back here that it was a reverse split, which is why the float has gotten so low. So most likely, if we zoom this chart out even further, we would see that the price has been declining for a long time. It was, in fact, below $1 a share. And that forced the company to do a reverse split in order to maintain compliance with NASDAQ. If they don't do a reverse split and the stock stays below a dollar, they're not in compliance. That's going to be a problem. So the price goes lower, lower after the reverse split. And then boom, today we've got news and it pops up. Okay. So the problem was for me, I don't usually do well trading cheap stocks. My Now, my wheelhouse is that if we talk about sort of the price range where I do the best, um, it's going to be between roughly five and 20. And, you know, yes, I'll have some stocks, you know, like GameStop over here. Uh, I'll have a few. It's not that I don't make any money, but it's just, I don't trade over here as much. So that's not my big wins, but I've really never had huge wins on stocks under $2. I know GameStop, you know, I, none of those happen. So occasionally in this area, I suppose if we were going to be a little bit more accurate, maybe it would be better to sort of do it like this uh, because occasionally I do have, you know, that home run trade like GameStop. Um, and I, that just doesn't happen on the, the lower price side of things. So anyways, this is where I do the most trading. This is where I consistently find the most success. Um, and so given the fact that when AUUD first hit my scanners, it was at a dollar and forty cents, a dollar fifty cents. I just thought, well, that's too cheap for me. You know, I really just don't think it's worth it. This isn't the type of thing that um, I'm going to be. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to do well on. And I was surprised. It goes from a dollar forty up to a dollar eighty. And when I first saw that pop, you know what I was thinking? It's probably going to reverse. I, I and very quickly, a ten thousand share sell, seller came out at about one ninety five, something like that. 
So I was like, already we're seeing big sellers. It dips down, it rips back up to two. So I was like, all right, it's coming up to two. And I thought about getting in there, maybe just for a small scalp with small share size. But then I saw that 10,000 share seller and I was like, well, there's already a big seller out. And then it blasts through that level and goes to 220. And I was like, well, shoot, you know, what am I going to do? Get in here? It's, it's probably a little too extended. I, I don't know if I should get in this high. Pro probably should try to just be patient. So then I'm kind of being patient and it squeezes here up to 260. And I end up taking my first trade at 259. It ends up going up to 270, 280. I got a small winner on it, but I only bought 2,500 shares on my first trade. So those of you who've been tuning in for a while know that uh, for the month of April, I've made this commitment that I'm gonna start each day by first trying to build a cushion of $1,000 of profit using a maximum position of 5,000 shares. That's 20 cents of profit with 5,000 shares. That should be achievable. Now, realistically with lower price stocks, it's gonna be harder to achieve because these don't put in 20, 30 cent moves the way a seven or eight or ten dollar stock will. A uh, eight, ten, fifteen dollar stock, you'll get you get twenty cents in a second on a nice pop. On a stock of this price range, mm, well, not really. So I started with twenty five hundred shares on my first trade because that felt kind of appropriate for breaking the ice. Uh, but I only got like five, six cents a share on it, so I didn't even make three hundred dot two hundred fifty dollars. It ends up going grinding slowly up to three, and then right here we have our first rejection. We tap three and we sort of slam back down. Now check this out. Look at this negative, or the volume, the high selling volume. So that volume profile for me, I thought that that was uh, particularly unattractive. I was like, nope, don't like that. And then it sells off and it comes back up to three again. And again, we get another topping tail. Sorry, we got a topping tail here. We got a topping tail here. Both of these look like shooting star candles. They have the body and then this long upper wick and they both have high volume red candles. So I said, here's the red flag. You know, this is not good. We have two high volume red candles, shooting stars. This doesn't look good to me. So at that point I thought, I'm not sure if I'm gonna trade it at all. It comes back up one more time. This candle was green, but it did still sell off. And it comes back up again. And when it came back up again here to three, it held three. It pops up to about 310 right here. It dips down, and I noticed that there were uh, buyers sitting at $3 on the bid. So essentially what happened was, you know, we, we kind of were, we had this area of psychological resistance, which was $3, right? So let's just, so this is $3 right here. That's three. So the price had, you know, rallied up to three. We had squeezed up, squeezed up, squeezed up. We pierced through three uh, and then, you know, ended up kind of coming back down, which gave us this red um, sort of shooting star candle. And then it, it pulls back a little bit, sort of comes back up again. And then again, another red shooting star candle. It comes back, drops down, comes back up one more time. You know, again, not a shooting star, pulls back slowly and then comes back up one more time right here. And right here, this is really critical because first of all, we are beginning to form some ascending support right here. So it's starting to show that it's holding this level, which is sort of giving us some buying support. People are buying off of the support level right here. It breaks through three. It comes up to that previous high up here at like 310 and it dips back down. And this is the spot where we're expecting it's going to reverse, right? We're expecting it's going to drop back down. But because this ascending support line is coming up closer, it drops, but you have buy orders here, people buying off of support, and now you have buy orders here right at three. Okay, so what happens is it comes down here, and this is where I took my best trade of the day on it, I would say. I bought right there, and it squeezes up through 310, and it rips immediately to 315, to 320 and to 330. It actually hits a high at 340. So we get a couple nice big green candles right there. Uh, and that, I mean, that really was a super clean trade. That was probably, it was my best trade of the day. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take that trade with big size because I didn't yet have my profit cushion to afford the risk. Okay, nonetheless, I got the trade there and that put me up about $1,000 on the day. So I got another, I don't know, 200, 
something dollars on this and then this with 5,000 shares was you know almost 20 cents so um from my entry so got you know about a thousand dollars in the green on the day now it pulls back again and so this is now going to show you where we top out let's see so this was the 10 second chart right here so this is just showing you the same thing we just looked at but on the 10 second so this is showing you how uh, first it comes up and this was that seller right here at 195 but it it broke through it and all of a sudden goes up to 260 and I was like son of a gun that was I think my first trade right there micro pullback it drops it comes back up it you know it comes up to three sort of red candle rejection rejection higher volume on the selling higher volume selling and then it kind of rallies back up here it dips down and that right there was the moment where I bought and that was that pop, which was which was nice. And that was the best trade. So then um, it proceeds to kind of grind higher. Now, the fact is, I'm up $1,466 on it, which isn't bad. And I'll go over the other stocks I traded today. But it's not that impressive. So what ended up happening is this was that first move to about 340 here. It pulls back down. It rallies back up. And it sort of feels like we're going to have a double top right here. And then it pulls back and it breaks. But at this point, I just kept feeling like, you know, it's so thickly traded. In fact, right now we have 94 million shares of volume on this stock. We've got a ton of volume and it's very thickly traded. And, and at this point, it's hard to get 15, 20 cent pops on it. You just, they're not happening, uh, not at least in a predictable way. So we ended up getting a little bit of a jackknife um, two jackknife candles, which for me was the, the, the sure signal that I had to walk away. But let's continue to watch this chart for a moment. So it hits that 340 level. It comes down. It comes back up here. We're going to watch it come back up. Rallies back up. Sort of tries to get to 350, 360. Pulls back. Right? Climbs up to four. And the problem now is that we're grinding. We're in a narrower price action. This was the area where the MACD was really open. Then it starts to go negative. It comes back up, but it barely crosses over. The moving averages aren't pulling apart. This is kind of classic grinder price action. Now at the open, we ended up getting a nice move. And what's super annoying is that I bought this at $4.17, uh, right about here, for the break of $4.20. Uh, at the open, it flushes. It pops back up and I was like, well, I'm just going to take my profit here on this. I was actually the, the this candle has three million shares of volume in the first one minute. My level two was moving so fast. I could barely I was seeing orders like all over the place. And I was like, I don't think I can manage my risk on this. I just need to get out. So I got out and the thing rips to five dollars. You know, I felt really silly about that. Hits a high here, drops down. You know, and I, I traded it in this area, I made a couple hundred dollars, but I just didn't feel comfortable. And then with that jackknife right there, where it went up to 520 and then dumps to 460, I was like, nope, see, I, and again, look at the MACD, it's now negative. I was like, nope, see, this is, this is all over. I'm not going to trust this. It comes back up, another dramatic jackknife right there. Nope, not safe. Just got to leave it alone. So, you know, the easiest trades, as it turns out, were at the very beginning of the move and at a time when the price was a little cheaper and i suppose i underestimated it and anyways so so that those are my first trades of the day uh, well auud so this was the case study that i wanted to go over now i also traded plur vvpr and ucar let's look at ucar next since i lost 1400 bucks on this okay so ucar now this one is interesting because the float is is low it's also a recent reverse split this one put in a nice big move pre-market. It squeezed up to a high of about $10. And I took my first trade on it uh, right here for the break of $8. I, I bought 5,000 shares because I was like, look at this thing. You know, this thing looks, it's breaking VWAP. I got in and fortunately I got out quickly with only a couple hundred dollar loss. So I think I lost 160 bucks, three cents, not bad. It comes back up again. And I was like, all right, I got shaken out, but I'm going to get back in. So I ended up getting back in on this candle right here. 
and it drops again. But the problem is on this one, I also took 5,000 shares, but on this one, I lost 30 cents a share. I was in it about 25 and I stopped out at about $8. So now I'm down 1400 on it. And it came down, bounced here again, came back up, back down, back up. I and then I took my final trade right here. Um, thank goodness I took small size at 850. It rejected completely. I mean, this is just really a, discouraging. And you know, I don't know why, you know, this one also very clean at the beginning of the move, which I missed because I was at 630, but I thought maybe we were going to start to break away, um, but that didn't happen today. So anyways, um, disappointing that I went red on um, VV, uh, UCAR as much as I did. And so actually the result of my PL today was that on my first trades, I had uh, on PLUR, this hit the high day Momo scanner. I bought a dip on it, got $700. And then I got my first 500 or so on AUUD and was up about 1300 on the day and then took this loss on UCAR. So I actually went from up 1300 all the way back to flat. I didn't go red today, but I went from 1300 back to flat or 1400, basically back to flat. And then I got a small scalp on VVPR, which gave me $238. Had some news today, whatever, not a very clean trade. And then I got a couple more trades on AUUD, which brought me back to up a thousand. Uh, but I, even though I was up over a thousand at one point earlier today, uh, I didn't increase my share size at that time because I didn't feel like I, um, you know, I just, I wasn't in the zone yet. I was like, well, you know, I got a little profit, but I'm just not feeling it yet. So I ended up just kind of taking it slowly and, uh, I am, you know, look, I'm grateful that I got um, got some profit today. These small days, you know what? This is exactly what I'm looking for. Small green days and small successful red days until the next day where I hit my daily goal in like three trades. Because on days where, you know, the leading gapper is between five and 10 or 15, it's just like within my wheelhouse of price range, that's what I'm going to do really well. Now, some people would say, Ross, you limited yourself to 5,000 shares on a stock that's $2, but then you turn around and take 5,000 shares on a stock that's $8. You know, five times eight is $40,000, right? Five times two is only 10,000. So why are you taking a $10,000 position on a $40,000 position? What if you weighted your position based on the amount of money in the trade? You said, I'm going to buy, you know, $30,000 of stock on the first trade. And on a $3 stock, that's 10,000 shares. And on a, you know, $5 stock, you know, again, like you just sort of do the math. My problem there is that on these low price stocks, it's not impossible to have a rug pull where you do suddenly lose 25 cents a share. And if I did that with 15,000 shares or 10,000 shares, I'm down 2,500. So I feel like for me, my risk management makes more sense in cents per share than it does based on total dollar position and percentages. So this is the way I'm doing it. Yeah, I was bummed out today that uh, I went up 1500 almost and then went back to flat, was able to rally back up. And even when I was at flat, I was saying to myself, you know, this, look, this could be a successful break even day here, right? I don't have to push it. If it's not happening, just walk away. But, you know, I just kind of stuck with it. I tr kept trading with small size, got a little bit more profit. And for a relatively choppy day in the market, I'm content with that. So yeah, even though we had a stock that went up over 250%, it wasn't easy for me to trade. And that's mostly due to the price and the fact that it became crowded really quickly. We had a couple other stocks that were moving higher. Um, LGVN was on the, on the gap scanner. And this one put in a squeeze at the open, gave it all back. Um, so, you know, there were a couple other stocks that popped up, but I didn't think anything was really obvious. Um, nothing really felt super clean. So I, I just, I don't want to jump around and try to trade different things. I, I think it's time for me to call it a day, lock it up. And, you know, as always, live to trade another day. I'll be back at it, um, you know, first thing tomorrow morning. Hopefully tomorrow we see some better opportunities. It only takes one. You know, we get a stock that is at that five, six dollar range and goes to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Boom. You know, is that that could that's going to be likely where I would do far better. Now, it doesn't guarantee it. I could still manage to lose on it, but that's where I'll probably find more success. 
And don't forget to cast your vote for the day and the time of the live class for this week. I'm really looking forward to it. I think you guys will really enjoy the class. So cast your vote and then we'll email you uh, the, the day and time that we end up choosing. All right. So as always, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you for my next upload real soon.